A diagram is a picture with a purpose. Its job is to teach something or help us learn about something. Some artists, called illustrators, have devoted their whole practice to drawing things like natural plants, animals, parts of the human body, or even mechanical, people-made objects. Diagrams are drawn clearly, and they can be simple or complex. They usually show all of the parts, and they have labels, which are the words or the names that describe the important parts of the thing being drawn. Beatrix Potter is known for her Peter Rabbit illustrations and stories, but she loved drawing mushrooms. James Audubon loved studying nature as well. Take a look at the inspirational image by artist Sophie Corrigan. She uses a simple drawing and creative humor to label her animal diagrams. Pointing to the small dotted eye on the skinny pig, she says, all seeing vision beans. To the mouth, she writes, lip donut. Around the face, she identifies the squeaky squeal region. And to the ear, the arrow points out baby cabbages. So funny, and here is Anatomy of a Snail. It has googly eyes and enchanted retractable wiggle stalks. It has a compact mobile home on its back. This squirrel has a nut nibbler mouth and tufty fluffies for its ears. So let's make a diagram of a animal or a pet that you love. This is my cat, Trudy. I stared at her and took pictures and started noticing her details. Look at these phantom black little tippy toes. Look at those tickly whiskers. Look at her fluffy underside. So when you're going to make a diagram, it helps to really study and do lots of tries. I practiced drawing my cat many times, so I knew that her body was kind of an oval shape. Her head was kind of round with a point on the bottom and she had triangle ears. You can use your creativity too, or look at a picture of any animal you like. I drew a long tail and four legs. She's kind of a rounder cat. After you draw with a pencil, you can use a pen. A pen will darken your lines and make it look like a very clear illustration. Now you can use whatever you have to add color. You might have crayons or colored pencils or markers. In this case, I had some very dry markers, but I thought I'm gonna go ahead and use these and I'll show you why. My marker is dry, but it makes a nice smudgy stripe for my cat, so I went with it. I looked at the patterns of the stripes on her and tried to be pretty accurate. This takes lots of looking and studying and copying. And if my cat were right next to me, it would be tricky but it's always worth it to do close observation of the animal you are drawing. So here I'm going back in with gray and a few other colors just to add some finishing details to her stripes. So now you're going to see why I think dry markers are awesome because when they are Crayola markers, they are water based and you can get a brush with some water and you can kind of smear those colors around to look even more like a painting. So just getting my water based marker wet makes it run around and I just wanted to show you that's cool. You may or may not have markers in your house. But if you do, you can always try adding water to make them blend and look like paint. When you are finished adding color, you can get a ruler or anything straight and draw your diagram lines. Make your line come out from the body part that you would like to label. The label is the word that you'll be adding. So I am drawing a line out from different parts of my kitty so I can write words pointing to those areas. And 
Now I'm using very nice and neat handwriting to write my words like munchy mouth and phantom black tippy toes. And then I will label my picture anatomy of Trudy. And there you have it with inspiration from diagrams and artists like Sophie Corrigan, you can do artistic anatomy.